Hi, I'm Mayor Robert Sullivan, and welcome to the 48th episode of Our Brockton. And really, the title speaks volumes. It's what it's about. It's Our Brockton. It's our community. That's our home. And I want to thank you for tuning in. I mean, this is, again, 48th episode, and uh, we've brought a lot of uh, people before you. And today, we have a true champion from the City of Champions, Mr. John Booten. Uh, John is, is, is an educator, a mentor, a heck of a basketball player, and an unbelievable basketball coach. So, John, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Really, Mayor. really appreciate it. And we're going to talk about uh, someone that's extremely special, one of your dear friends, uh, former coach of Brockton High School, Vic Ortiz, who we lost, unfortunately, last December. Um, and, you know, Vic was, uh, when you think about Brockton basketball, um, Vic Ortiz is the person you think about, right? So, you know, you could talk about John Booten, Jack Lehan, but Vic, Vic Ortiz is really someone that I considered a friend. So, um, first of all, welcome. Welcome for, uh, for our show. And, uh, for those um, that don't know you, just a little bit of background about yourself, and then if you don't mind speaking about your dear friend Vic Ortiz. Okay. Uh, I spent 33 years uh, teaching and coaching in the Brockton schools. Uh, was, every day was different and every day was a challenge, but I loved every minute of it and I've uh, never been sorry. It was a, a great experience for me. Uh, as far as coaching was concerned, I came to Brockton uh, having had a little bit of background in coaching and uh, became the head coach. And at the time, Coach Ortiz was uh, working as the freshman coach for Jack Lehan. Mm -hmm. And I had known Victor just a little bit, but I was impressed with him right from the very beginning. So I felt as though he was going to be the right guy to work as my right hand and so he took over the JV program uh, right away and we had immense success. Um, and then when I had a uh, change in jobs uh, and I moved out of the Brockton schools for a year, he took over and it was just from that point forward, 24 years of nothing but e exactly what everybody was expecting from Brockton sports, Brockton athletics. He did wonders with kids. He was just amazing as a, as a basketball coach. He was amazing as a guidance counselor. He did all kinds of wonderful things. And I can, I can begin with, we're, we're starting now with athletics, but I don't want to uh, put behind us the aspect of what a guidance counselor was. Because we became very good friends, uh, there were times when he would confidentially tell me stories about receiving phone calls at two, three o'clock in the morning from players, from kids that he's had in school. There were problems. There was a fire. There were uh, family issues. Something would come up and they felt as though they could turn to him and he was always there for them. He'd go out in the middle of the night. He'd go there at two o'clock in the morning and make sure that the families were taken care of, whatever it took to get those kids back into school and learning again. That was Victor. I mean, I, I know a lot, I graduated again from Brockton High in 88 and, and a lot of people considered coach a, as a father figure, right? And so when you go to Brockton High now and you go to the hard court, Vic Ortiz's name is, is, is on the basketball court and, and that, you know, you see that but if you didn't know the man, you missed out, right? I mean, he was just a genuine person, an educator, coach, a mentor, like we said. But I, I love the fact that um, it didn't matter what time of day it was, right? His, his, his players were, were his kids, right? And he wanted to help them. Even if they'd already graduated from Brockton High, right? He never, never forgot who they were. Could you give us an example or maybe some behind the scenes um, ideas? So, so he, he, he was working with you when you were the head coach, right? He was doing JV. That's correct. Um, what, what was some of his, I mean, X's and O's and, and, and you know, running plays and stuff is one component. But from a coaching level, when, when, when you witnessed him, what, what stood out in terms of his coaching engagement or interaction with players? The number one thing, discipline. Mm. That was, he was fundamentally sound and he made sure that all of his players were fundamentally sound, but also the discipline that he expected from these players. And he had ways of making certain that that happened, whether it was making them run suicides yeah. when they didn't pay attention or that they did something that they shouldn't have done. Or there were times when I saw him throw kids out of and say, 
don't come back until you've learned this and throw them out of, out of practice. Uh, and he was just so fundamentally sound because of his background. He had been a great player in Puerto Rico. Mm. He uh, came to the United States after having served in the Navy. Um, he spent uh, four years in the Navy in Vietnam on the Constitution in Boston and at the Naval Academy down in Newport. He went to Stonehill College, blew his knee out. He had gotten a scholarship, blew his knee out, and because he was older, having spent four years at, uh, uh, in the service, the coaches realized that he had a lot to offer. And so he stayed on and volunteered as a coach for his last three years at Stonehill. But you, I, I don't want to put the points behind us, but I do feel as though people need to understand Victor became a Brocktonian when he graduated from Stonehill. He moved to the, into the city and got a job as a guidance counselor in the school system, and he never left. Mm. He loved this city, he loved the community, and he just felt as though it was most important that these kids have a great experience, whether it was in the, in the classroom, excuse me, or on the basketball court. And so now, to get back to it, his discipline was the most important thing. And his kids, when they came up to the varsity level, they were prepared. They were always prepared. So when I left in 1983 and worked for the Bombardiers. Yeah, Bay State Bombardiers. The Bay State Bombardiers, that's right. That's right. He took over the program and in two years, they were the state champs. Yeah. And he took those kids that he knew from the JV level and just turned them into incredible players. And they were, the camaraderie was unbelievable. And then uh, they just took off from there. In his tenure, and, and he coached for 24 years the varsity, but he coached for quite a, quite a number of years, including Stonehill. But as far as the, um, the time that he spent with these, these kids was even beyond the court. If he had a kid that he felt as though he could help that uh, needed a little bit more of his teaching one-to-one, -one, he would contact parents. He would say, I'd like to take your son out for dinner. And they would go out and they would sit down and over a dinner ha have two hours of just me time. And he said he always had a one, it was a wonderful influence that he had on these kids. But these kids went on and on. And now you mentioned the aspect of going forward. Um, even after he had retired, he would have his players come back and I'm talking about 20, 25 years later, these kids would come back to his house at Christmas and it, it became a tradition. They would decorate the, the tree for him at Christmas time. Wow. He would go out, Cape Cod Cafe pizza and a case of beer and these kids would come back and the camaraderie among the different generations of kids that came. It was, it was just incredible. And he, the father figure that you said, that was him. Another story, and I'm not gonna mention the player's name, but this was one of the kids that was on the state championship team. Became a great basketball player for DePaul University coming out of Brockton. Graduated from there, ended up living in North Carolina. Maintained his presence as an athlete and was um, riding a bike to keep himself fit. Got into an accident, lost his leg from the knee down. When Victor told me that story, he cried and he cried. Now this is a kid that had been gone from the high school for well over 20 years. Right. Cried and cried. He had been in touch with this kid, unbeknownst to me, like once a month, once every six weeks, they would talk to one another really? on the phone. And this kid now calls him and said, you know, coach, this is what I, what I need. Can you help me? And his guidance became everything. It kept this kid from going over the edge. And it was all Victor's fault. And it was, it's an amazing uh, story that, uh, that Victor just, 
This was what Victor did. Right. He never told anybody this, nobody but me. But now that he's gone, I feel as though I, I need to share that. John, I'm glad you shared that. It just speaks volumes on his character. Indeed. Right? And, and, you know, we, we've all played on teams where a coach does a job, and then the next season the coach forgets about the previous season. Um, you never did that. And, and, you know, you could talk about other sports. You, know, you could talk about Coach Colombo, Armand Colombo, Coach Ortiz, Coach Lehan, Coach Bowen, uh, Coach Booten, you know, um, Coach Darcy on the hockey side. But, but people have to understand that, you all have a passion, right? When you become an educator, it's, it's in you, right? You want to you teach the next generation. Coaching actually magnifies that, right? And so that's a good story to share because a lot of times I think people forget the human connection, right? I mean, the age difference is different, right? Your coaches tend to be a lot older than your players, at least in high school. That's the perception, right? But when you're an 18-year-old kid um, and you have a father figure, um, and then you tell a story that they go back at the holidays and Christmas time. I mean, that's, thank you for sharing that, John, because that, a lot of people don't know that, right? A lot of people know who Coach Ortiz was. They knew Vic Ortiz. They might not have known that he was a guidance counselor, right? And, and that's another, even though you're not coaching basketball, when you're a guidance counselor at Brockton High School or any high school, it's a coaching, right? You're trying to teach kids what they need to do to go on to college or in the workforce or in the armed services. So um, what are some other stories you want to share about Coach? Well, uh, he he was an amazing cook. Come on, okay, he, really? Oh, he was he was an incredible cook, and I have a, I can burn water. <laughs> so when I would come over to visit with him, uh, and he'd start telling me about oh I made this last night or I made this the other day and so forth, and I would sit there and I'd listen to him and you know it, it, it was everything to keep me from falling asleep because. I had no idea what he was talking about, these flambés and these, all of these things that he would make. He, he was a chef. He was wow. basically a chef. And people, people didn't really know that unless he invited you over to his house for dinner. And wow. then uh, oh, his favorite and mine too was his paella. Really? Oh, he Unbelievable. Made, oh, yeah. it was just phenomenal. Yeah. That's, so was that's, he self-taught and did he learn it as a, as a kid growing up in Puerto Rico or was it later on in life? That's, uh, that's a good question. And I believe that, um, he, he had started with his family, okay. with his mom. Okay. However, he learned a lot from, you may remember Ed Kelly. Yes. Ed Kelly yes. was a principal here in the Brockton schools and he was also the best man in Victor's wedding. Really? And they were very, very close and Ed was an accomplished chef. Mm. And, uh, and Ed used to teach him um, how, to, how to make some things. And I'm telling you, he just, uh, he just ran with it. And uh, he would just talk to me about it. And I was like, oh, Victor. I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> but he, that was Victor. That and, was a passion he that he loved, had. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, he, he was just amazing. Just amazing. But I must tell you recently with the help of, um, your chief of staff, Sidney Marrow and, uh, your, let's see, your constituent service services liaison. liaison. I got it right. You got it right. Yep. Yep. Jay DeGrace. Those two were very helpful in helping me put, uh, put together the ability to be able to have um, Victor brought forward because it's most important to me that Victor be remembered beyond the fact that he was a very good basketball coach. I wanted him to know that he was a very good person. And there is more than just being a basketball coach, a reason why his name is on the floor. It's known as Victor Ortiz Court. And yes, it's in the building um, that was named after um, oh, Staff. Arthur Staff, yeah. thank you. And Arthur Staff, although he has more wins than Coach Ortiz, he also coached a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Coach Ortiz had 385 wins, wow. and he won 71% of his games. He won five self-sectional championships. This is in 24 years. That's amazing. Come on. Yeah. You don't do that anymore. No, no. That doesn't happen no, anymore. No. He was amazing, and he just, you know, anything that he touched, really, uh, he did not let it go until it was perfection. 
And I think what's, what's really brilliant, um, and thank you for taking the time to, to share some stories about your dear friend. And, you know, I think what's brilliant is that, again, it's what he did off the court to help people, right? Never forgetting. And it's just, again, I said at the beginning, it's in his fabric, right? And his wife, Joanne, unbelievable person as well. And, and you know, I'm just, I'm really proud, John, that you reached out to my office in Sydney, Maryland, Jada Grace, to tell the story. And, you know, because again, people need to hear it, right? And if you're a proud Brockton boxer, once a boxer, always a boxer. What is probably the m most thing, that, uh, the, really the thing that you miss most about not having Vic, of being able to pick up the phone and call Vic every day? What, what, what is it that you miss the most? Saturday afternoons. Yeah. It's Saturday afternoons. I'm, I, I love to golf. A lot of people know that. And you're good at it. You, I, yeah, you're good at it. Don't I be don't modest. Know about yes, that. yes, I, I, yes. I'm, I'm an average golfer, <laughs> but um, I love to come after. I would, I would finish my round of golf on Saturdays, especially after Victor got sick, mm -hmm. and he couldn't really leave the house very much because of the fact that he was afraid that with his um, immune system having been compromised yes. so badly yes. he just felt as though he didn't uh, he didn't want to be too much around too many too public circumstances so i would go to him and he would sit across the room from me and we would just talk for hours and he i and i was do, i would do that nearly every saturday and if i couldn't make it saturday because maybe it was it was raining on the golf course and i wasn't coming to brockton i would go on sunday uh, whenever we always got an opportunity to talk, and he was immense in my life in many ways because with his guidance background, he was able to help me when um, my mom passed, when my brother passed, helped me to work my way through the stages of grief. Mm -hmm. uh, he was just, he was a, he was a friend, and... Uh, and we became close for 45 years. 45 years we were tight. That's a gift. Yeah. It really is. He was, he was a very special person in my life. And that's why when this opportunity presented itself, I just could not say no. I wanted this opportunity to be able to tell people all about Victor so that people, not now this will be for posterity. Yes. And people will be able to look back and say, why was this, core, why was this named after Victor? They can look at this, and they can also look at the stories, um, if I may. Yes. Coach Dick Oso and I, at the wake for Victor Ortiz, we had some postcards made up, and we asked people to take a postcard, and Coach, or um, Coach Oso was able to set up the ability to be able to uh, have people send electronically stories mm -hmm. about Coach Ortiz. We got well over 20, some of them lengthy, some of them just a paragraph or two. Stories f as, as a guidance counselor, uh, stories as a basketball coach, stories as a friend, stories as a, um, a teacher. Uh, whatever the, it was, some people wrote anonymously, some people didn't mind putting their name in there. but. Sydney and Jay have helped me by getting those stories out there. It's on the City of Brockton website. It's now, I, as I understand it, it's going to be on the Brockton Public Schools Great. website. Great. It's going to be on the Alumni Association website. I'm responsible for the, uh, the Hall of Fame Facebook page. I'm going to make sure that it gets on there. I want to make sure that people have a chance to read these stories mm -hmm. and really see the different sides of Victor Ortiz. I think that's great and, and, and thank you again John for, for bringing this forward and you know I'd love to invite you back um, to talk about yourself too John because you're very modest but um, you know you're a champion from the city of Brockton right you've done a lot and you've helped a lot of kids as well um, you know and you were a heck of a basketball player yourself back in the day but to, before we conclude um, if someone's watching this and they said you know what I have a story about Coach Ortiz you know uh, I haven't lived in Brockton, maybe I'm on the West Coast, maybe I'm in Europe. Um, could they still get in touch with you or if they want to get in touch with the mayor's office to share some of their thoughts, would that be still something that they could do? That would be absolutely wonderful because okay. we can put it together and 
I will make sure that once it's put together electronically, I'll get it to Sydney and we'll make sure that, or she will make sure that it gets up there. It's, um, it's these, I know people probably either lost the card or forgot about it yes. or what have you. Yes. And it's been, uh, come Christmas, it's gonna be a year since Coach That's Ortiz right. passed. That's right. So it's important that uh, his story remain out there so that people understand. I just, you know, 20, 30 years from now, people are gonna say, who was Victor? Right. And these will be there for them. And they'll know now, thanks to your efforts, uh, you know, supporting a dear friend. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Mr. Booten, for being here well, today. thank you for having me. Uh, we will have you back again and um, really appreciate you sharing some, some personal thoughts and then some, some history of the man, Victor Ortiz. I want to thank you for tuning in to our Brock in the 48th episode. I'm Mayor Robert Sullivan, and we will uh, see you uh, in short order for the 49th episode. Again, my, my guest is, is Mr. John Booten. And again, thank you very much, Mr. Booten. My pleasure. Thank you.